Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator. And earlier today, we were working on a tool and we were making decisions on something and Isaias mentioned maybe using, I think he mentioned using like a message. And I had said, yeah. well, what about a shell hook? And he came back and said, well, I think we'll do this way. I'm like, that's fine. And then it occurred to me, I really had no idea of when to use a post message or send message or a shell hook or the window hooks. Like I know they mm -hmm. exist, the decision between which one to use, when and where, like I wasn't clear on. Right. And I thought you're not alone there. <laughs> you're you're really not alone. Yeah, even though I do have the basic knowledge about them, but if we were going to go to the nitty gritty of them, like why would you choose one over the other? I wouldn't have had an answer. I think that's what this video is all about, which took a little time. And um got at least even chat GPT to start off with something. And we wanted to kind of like show that, you know. Yeah, let's minute. discuss the, yeah. yeah. Right. So first of all, you have to understand all programs, it, specifically in Windows, they create kind of like a type of event that we call as a message. So whenever you click a button, whenever you click on your device, a message is being sent to a particular software and the software then reacts to it and so on. That's what we uh, refer to as window messages. And the interesting thing about that is that one program can communicate with another program by sending messages to it. Like for example, I can definitely, from an auto hotkey script, send message, using the send message command or the post message command, send a message to another program. And if the message is crafted correctly, the other program would respond to it. Like for example, if I send it, click on that one button, if I crafted the message correctly, it would click on the button, even well, if it is not visible, even if it is not active or anything. So that's the cool thing. One of about those it. videos of yours I watched like 13 years ago. I think he used it on Winning Up, if I remember right. But Winamp, you know, right. Yeah. Sending messages to control it playing and starting, right, and doing whatever. Yeah. And you showed how you can Google it and find the, the message in which one to send and whatever. And you can programmatically yeah. API type approach you're not you're not sending a mouse click to the button, right? You're programmatically no. telling it play. Yeah. Funny thing, you you're you're speaking that program's language, so to speak. So you it, instead of you having to move the mouse and click on that location and hope for the best, you can just send it a message and it would know what you meant and it would just do it. We right? have a really good video talking about the the whole people come to AutoHotkey and they kind of imitate a human trying to automate clicks and mouse clicks, but you can take an API approach and do it programmatically, right? And that was right. the big game changer for me of under one, just to even understanding that. And that, wow, when you take the API approach, things are so much more reliable, fast. Um, they work across computers so much better, more robust, which is also why we're kind of honing into this as well. When we do stuff right. for clients, we take these approaches because our tools end up being far more robust, not just in speed and accuracy, but also working on different systems. The biggest downside that it has is that you need to know what messages that program accepts. And that is not an easy task because you would have to hook to that to that software with, with some tools that are available to actually hook to the messages. You can see them going. But the, the problem is how many there are. There are thousands and hundreds of thousands of messages in, in 10, 20 minutes. It, it's, oh. So for you to hone down on that one action is really, you know, time consuming. We, we you and I tried uh, like a year and a half ago to filter, automate filtering the messages to limit, to say, hey, when I run this, only show these, which is the ones where most, and it was, it was like chaos. We still, still get it to work still quite well. It's not as simple, right? So, so that's the only downside to it. So if you were the one who wrote the program, then you know what messages it accepts. But if you are a person who don't know what the program does, you have to really take time to investigate. Now, on the other hand, we have other things. Let me go with the window hooks because they are very kind of similar to this one. Uh, the window hooks are, again, messages. Those are types of messages. But you're hooking to it. That means that you connect to another program. So you, with the Windows messages, especially in, in scripting languages and programming languages, you have access to those messages usually with a built-in function. In our hotkey, we have the on message command that you capture all the messages and then you decide what you want. You capture 
the message that you care about, and then you decide what to do with it. But if you want to connect to another window that is not created by you, now you have to use the window hooks. And that's the part that now becomes a little bit more complex because now it is something that must be limited to a given window and it's children. It cannot be just any window, like all the windows for that program. No, if you have a program that has 20 windows, you have to tell me which window you want to connect to and I will, and the window hook is just gonna give you information about that one. And this one is a little bit more complicated to set up. What we have in our hotkey is that we have a library, a, a wing hook library. I think we, translated the V1 version of it to V2 recently, right? Well, or we found it. I, I don't know if we did it, but, but we uh, the shell found the V2 version. The really? shell oh, the shell one. Okay. All right. Well, we have to see if there's a library for V2 right now. Yeah. Because we haven't made a video on it yet. <laughs> no, but basically, yeah. This one, you will need a library to make it work. There is no built-in languages, language features in our hotkey to connect to that, that. Lastly, there's the shell hooks. Now this, again, the hooks imply that you're connecting to something that is not your program, right? So you're connecting to the main shell. And the shell is usually a general term to refer to the operating system as a whole. I will not say exactly that. That's just kind of like a simplification of it. There's a part of the operating system that is called a shell, and that's what we're connecting to. I was going to say, it's almost like a lower level kind of thing. Of Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's something below the graphics and everything. It's just uh, kind of the core of the operating system, so to speak. So in there, there's a, that would be the best way to get information about the operating system. So for example, if you want to know when one window is not acting anymore, and another window got activated. So when, when you switch the the focus from one window to another, the best way to know that is the shell hooks because the window messages only have your side of the story. The window hooks only have their side of the story. Would you like to keep track of both at the same time? No, the window operating system is doing that already. So then you just connect the shell and you just grab that information about, hey, did that one window lose focus or that other window got the focus? Correct me if I'm wrong here. What, what often you do is you you register something with it saying, hey, yes. hey, Windows, let me know when this happens, right? Yes. And it's right. crazy, crazy fast. That is correct. And you have to understand that there's a group of variables for hooks that are predefined. It's not like, oh, I want to get all this information. No, you have to go ahead and take a look at the shell hooks and see which messages are available for you to connect to. Um, and once you connect to one of them, you're going to get the information about that. Yeah. Years ago, Jackie and I did a podcast on this, and I'd say, go watch it. It's really good. Jackie demonstrated a class we found. I think it was Fanatic Guru wrote that class. Um, the other day, I asked Irfan to convert that class to V2. And so that's what we converted but we'll, you and I, as I we'll, we'll do a video on that at some point of how to use it. But what's really cool about it is in that video where Jackie showed me, like, I didn't know anything about classes or anything. And in 20 minutes, he showed me how easy it is to use that class, just almost as like a function, just to create an instance of it, right? And use the include and call it. But like, it was so easy to watch for a certain window to exist. And it, Usually with AutoHockey, we say like, oh, let's have a set timer or let's wait for whatever, but we're checking things, you know, and this puts it at, at sea level and it's crazy fast and it's it's right when something happens, it it just triggers it so fast. It's it's crazy. That's correct. Now I'm just reading very quickly through this and I noticed that some of the messages that we're looking at, they are kind of similar or close to each other because here in when I go to the Microsoft Hooks overview, they're both listed together, the shell, the mouse, all of them are kind of like in the same grouping. But what I remember is that that's not just part, that there's the set windows hook in here, that's one of the functions, and there's the other one of using the shell hook specifically, mm -hmm. which is part of what you guys were talking about last time, right? So 
this is a very complex topic. This is not simple. And then if, uh, I mean, for people who are not programming in those languages, if you're programming in C Sharp, C++, those guys, you probably are totally used to them because that's normal part of programming in that language. For us who are using AutoHotKey, for example, then if you're not familiarized with other languages, it might look very complex. It might look really weird. That's why whenever I can, if I am able to use the window messages directly from my script, I use the built-in on message command. I just work with this. It's easier because it is the one that you're more, more familiarized with. Everything else is going to look very similar to what we're, you're working with. As soon as you start with shell hooks and window hooks, there's a lot of things that are going under the hood that when somebody creates a library in our hotkey, they're just hiding all that complexity. Right. Well, just give it, I, I just I want to add, get this and you just get that, you know? I would add to it, that's almost 90% of what auto hotkey is doing in the first place. Yes, right? that's the, exactly right. And post messages in the background, but they Lexicos has just wrapped it to make it really easy so I can do something and not have to be crazy smart. You right. Know. And, and, and you can go to Rosetta code online and see examples of simple C++ code versus a simple auto hotkey script. You will see like 10 lines of code for auto hotkey and like 20, 50 lines of code for doing the same thing in C++. That's what auto hotkey is kind of like hiding. It's just making it easy for you to do those kind of things, which is great for a simple task because you don't want to spend one hour coding for something but it was just clicking on that one button over there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so when we look at these three topics, what uh, what we are just trying to explain here is this is a very interesting approach to having information about your program when something happens on your program, you capture the messages, or actually sending information to another program with sending with messages. And outside of that, you have this other realm of shell hooks and window hooks that it is a topic on its own, but it's good to know that they're there because there are certain situations that you it's better to use that. Like, for example, you remember this, this, this idea of, oh, I want to watch a folder, and if a file is created in there, I want to now back it up, right? And I don't want to have a loop checking for the folder, right? And I don't want to do many other things like a timer every 10 milliseconds. No, that's where a shell hook would be very handy because there's a shell hook that tells you when a file was created on a given folder. So you just connect to it. And the system actually notifies you. You don't have to have a loop. You don't have to have a timer. You don't have to be checking. Just as soon as it happens, your script kind of reacts to it. And that's, that's done at, at C level, not auto hotkey speed, right? Right. It's, it's, it's a win, double win. Yeah, definitely. So at this point, I hope that that is, it gives you a little bit of, a, of an idea of a different topic. It might be a, mere, a little bit more complex of a topic, but it's good to know that that's there for those who are trying to really step up their automation. Because many times, shell hooks is just the way to go for many automation tasks. Yeah. Yeah, and each of these have their place, right? And that's where we, you know, we use them, but the thought process, hopefully this kind of helped you a little bit of understanding. If you're doing something within a given program and you want that window to react on it, okay, maybe a, a post message or something, or if you're communicating to another program and you want to look up the command, the, the message to do that, okay, Windows messages are, can do those things. If you want to detect when something has happened or watch for something happened that's not part of your program, Shell hooks are really great at that, right? And watching for certain things happen, the, the, something's registered, something's been detected, an event has happened. Amazing what you can do with those things. Um, and then the window hooks, I think you were saying that's more like between windows is? Yeah, you know, it's just when I connect to a window that is not mine, that I, would, I didn't create it. So if my program didn't create that window, I usually do not have access to its messages. It's kind of like its own bubble. But I could connect to it, and then take a peek at certain things that happen inside that program. Cool. All right. Well, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed that. If you learned something here, please like the video. It really helps us out. We release videos three times a week with the largest auto hockey channel out there. Now with over 10,000 subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't miss out. Have an awesome day. Check right. out our courses. They come with a 200% money back guarantee. Um, I'll put the link up here if you're interested. Cheers. Good.